This is AviationWeather.gov, run by the National Weather Service Aviation Weather Center. It's a one-stop resource for getting all the weather information and insights we'll need to do flight planning. Let's have a look at some of the features so we can put into practice what we've learned so far about aviation weather reports. The homepage shows current conditions on the map. Each one of those colored dots are reporting stations, like at airfields, which are reporting less than VFR conditions such as marginal VFR, IFR, and low IFR, depending on the color. These polygons, like the red rectangle over the central part of the country, are SIGMETs, significant meteorological information for things like convective activity. Also, these little symbols are pilot reports, PIREPs, transmitted by aircraft experiencing things like turbulence or icing. This current conditions chart on the homepage is meant to give you a high-level glance at what's going on around the country. If we click on it, we get into the details of a specific area like here over Missouri. We see a bunch of data for a number of reporting stations, as well as animated radar returns showing precipitation. Each reporting station is showing the current METAR. Let's have a look at St. Louis International, KSTL. There are numbers and letters around the red circle at the station. Starting from the top left and going around counterclockwise, this is showing, first, the field temperature. It's 58 degrees in Fahrenheit. Even though we use Celsius in aviation, sometimes the National Weather Service will present Fahrenheit because there are other users of this data outside aviation. Below that is the visibility, 7 statute miles. Then the dew point of 54 degrees is shown. The temperature dew point spread is only 4 degrees Fahrenheit, indicating high relative humidity. On the top right is the number 966. This is the altimeter setting, which might not make sense at first, but what they do to save room is delete the first digit, which is either a 2 or a 3, since you can infer it from here. This means the altimeter setting is 2996, since 3996 would be absurd. The 9 below that refers to the height of the lowest cloud ceiling in hundreds of feet, so it's 900 feet. Finally, the reporting station KSTL is shown. The circle colored in completely in red means that the field is IFR, which is what red means. This is the case anytime the ceiling is lower than 1000 AGL like it is here, or if the visibility is below 3 miles. Another element to the symbol is the wind barb, a line moving from in this case the southeast in towards the circle, indicating winds out of the southeast. The wind velocity is indicated by two barbs, one large one meaning 10 knots, and one small one meaning an additional 5 knots, so 15 knots of wind. There's also G22 printed on the barb meaning wind gusts to 22 knots. If we click on the red dot, we get the full METAR, showing the wind, visibility, cloud layers, temp and dew point, and altimeter setting we already saw. If we click over to a different airport with a blue circle, we see that the cloud ceiling is 1100 overcast. This isn't IFR, but since the clouds are between 1000 and 3000 feet, it's marginal VFR. Also note that there's a symbol next to the 5, meaning there's 5 miles of visibility in haze. Not all circles are fully colored in. Northwest of St. Louis, at KSUS, the blue circle is three quarters filled in, indicating how much of the sky is obscured. It's a broken layer at 1400 feet, with six miles of visibility in haze. If we zoom out, we see the radar animation showing the heaviest precipitation corresponding with that red quadrangle which says convective. That's the sigmet, so that makes sense. We can click the layers icon to toggle things like radar and sigments, so now we're only looking at METARs and PIREPs. If we turn on fronts, we can see the frontal boundaries and low and high pressure systems depicted. Current time is 1800 Zulu, shown by default, but we can use the slider to go back in time and then we can move time forward to show how the fronts have been moving towards this area over the past 12 or so hours. The graphical area forecast can be displayed on the map to show predicted weather. Ceilings and visibility are shown in different colored areas. Clicking the legend in the bottom right decodes these colored areas. The areas of low IFR are shown over central and western Missouri, corresponding to the segment area. We could do the same with precipitation. We could advance the slider at the bottom forward to see how the prediction changes over time. We can call up a list of METARs by identifier in the products tab, typing out the airport or station identifiers to get the current METAR, and we can have the system decode it for us in plain English. The chart can show TAFs as well, just as it showed METARs. Clicking St. Louis gives us the full TAF forecast. A great product on this site is the forecast discussions. Here, a National Weather Service specialist will give their two cents on the full weather picture for a chosen area, as well as how weather is forecast to develop. 
This gives important context for you when flight planning. The prog charts allow us to look at how fronts, precipitation, and other weather is forecast to move across the map for the next 12 to 24 hours. This is a great flight planning tool to make sure you're not going through a system you don't want to. Play around with aviationweather.gov and see how you can fit it into briefing your next cross-country flight.